Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Dharmesh Mehta YouTube channel. In today's Crystal Basics series, we are going to study suspension. We have divided this topic in two parts. Today we are going to study first part. In that, we are going to understand what is suspension, what are the different types of suspension, the ingredients used in suspension, and what are the steps in manufacturing suspension. So, let's get started. So let's first define what is suspension. So suspension is defined as a coarse distortion of a solid material in liquid. So here the solid material is referred to as the dispersed phase and the liquid material is defined as the continuous phase. Okay. So let's understand this definition with the help of an email. So here we are having two test tubes. In first test tube, we are having solution, while in the second test tube, we are having suspension. And you can see there are no particles in the first test tube because in solution, the solid particles is dissolved in the liquid and then the solution is formed. Whereas when you see the suspension test tube, here you can see the particles. These are the solid particles which we are referring to as the dispersed phase, right? And then there is a liquid phase. So we defined it as a continuous phase. So here the solid material is not dissolved in the liquid. It is dispersed in the liquid. Okay, so that is the difference between solution and a suspension. So it is called as biphasic or heterogeneous system. So let's understand why it is called as so. As you can see, there are two phases. First is a solid phase and second is a liquid phase. So two phases, that's why it is called biphasic and heterogeneous system because the two phases are different from each other. Okay, so two phases are different from each other. That's why it is called a heterogeneous system. Now look at the types of the suspension. The first type is oral suspension. So this suspension is taken by a mouth. Okay, so example of this is antacid suspension. Second is externally applied suspension. So these are dermatological preparations, means which are applied on the skin. Third, we have parenteral suspension. So these are given via injections. Okay, so these are three types of suspension. Moving further, let's study the advantages of suspension. First advantage is it. it is going to mask the taste of the drug. Okay, so the drug chloramphenicol is very bitter in taste, whereas chloramphenicol palmitate is not so bitter as compared to chloramphenicol. So it is formulated as a suspension. So here it is helping to mask the taste of the API or the drug. Second advantage is, is drug stability. It is increasing the drug stability. So the drug penicillin G is soluble in water and it forms a solution. But the problem with that is it is instable in the solution form. So when it is formulated as protein penicillin G, it is formulated then as a suspension which is stable in form. Okay. The next advantage is it, it is increasing the bioavailability of the API or the drug. For example, when we compare the antacid tablets with antacid suspension, the bioavailability of antacid suspension is more than the tablet. So it is better to take antacid as a suspension. The last advantage is, is it is giving prolonged action of the drug. For example, protamine being insulin suspension gives a prolonged action. That is, it is showing its biological action over a longer duration of time. Now, let's look at the disadvantages of suspension, which is physical stability. So as we know, the drug particles or the dispersed phase is not soluble. It is dispersed in the liquid form. 
over a period of time due to gravity this phase can settle down means the solid particles will settle down and a patient may think that the suspension is gone bad and he will not take it. so this is a big problem for physical stability of suspension second is oxidation or hydrolysis we know that the particles are suspended in a liquid form mostly it's water so water can lead to oxidation or hydrolysis of the drug particles third problem is microbial attack as the vehicle is water it can be easily attacked by the microbes leading to again a instability of the suspension and the last disadvantage is rate of absorption now when we compare the rate of absorption of suspension with rate of absorption of solution definitely the rate of absorption of solution will be more so this is a disadvantage again for suspension now let's look at the ingredients for formulation of suspension means what are the different types of ingredients we use for formulation first is obviously the drug or api which is the main ingredient in the suspension second is vehicle so this is the continuous phase of suspension third is the suspending agents this will increase the viscosity of the vehicle or the continuous phase so that the solid particles won't settle down easily they will also form a film around the solid particles so as to reduce the inter particle interactions next we have weighting agents so this will ensure the weighting of the drug particles next we have flocculating agents this will help in formation of flocks of the dispersed phase flocks means aggregates of the dispersed phase next we have solvents which are used in the suspension for dissolution of some particles next is solvent which is used for dissolution of some ingredients then we have density modifier this will increase or decrease the density of suspension as per the requirement next we have preservative this will help against the microbial attack and this will ensure the stability of the suspension antioxidants will help in antioxidants will ensure there is no oxidation of the drug particle so this will also again ensure the stability of suspension humectants are used to retain the moisture in suspension organoleptic agents means flavorants or perfume used in the suspension this are for the increasing the taste or patient accessibility of the suspension now let's see the preparation of suspension there are two methods for preparing suspension first is dispersion method in this the solid particles are simply dispersed in the continuous phase second we have precipitation method there are three methods in precipitation first is precipitation using organic solvents second we have precipitation with change of ph media and third we have precipitation with double decomposition now we are going to study the manufacturing of suspension first let's see some criteria for manufacturing of suspension so we have to select the right material that goes into the manufacture so we have to consider the incompatibilities of certain ingredients and then we have to select the material accordingly for the formulation so we have to follow the step and the sequence correctly while manufacturing third we have to look for the preservation and storage of the product preservation because it can go my preservation because it can undergo microbial attack or oxidation or hydrolysis as we have seen earlier and the storage is a important factor in preservation of the product ensure that the suspension will have a longer life now we are going to look at the small scale manufacturing of suspension so first first step is 
the insoluble material that is the dispersed phase is grinded or levigated okay into smooth phase now smooth phase is form using a mixture of vehicle and weighting agent so we add the insoluble material and vehicle along with weighting ingredients vehicle along with weighting agents and then it is grinded to form a smooth phase so now all the soluble ingredients are then dissolved in the vehicle and added to the smooth paste to get slurry now slurry is formed and now this slurry is transformed into graduated cylinder and now the motor is rinsed with successive portion of vehicle now this will ensure all the material of the motor is transferred into cylinder and then we are getting suspension now this is small scale manufacturing of suspension that is we do in the labs during practical now large scale manufacturing of suspension is done using this machine first is colloidal mills and second is pomonizers so this is a picture of colloidal mill so in this the suspension is added from here now this is rotor it moves and it will reduce the particle size of dispersed phase and then we get the final suspension from here the next types are homogenizers the next types are homogenizers so here again particle size is reduced so there are different types of homogenizers so in first picture here you can see it is named as single phase homogenizer because it is reducing the particle size at a single step while in double phase homogenizer while in double phase homogenizer the particle size is reduced at two phases that's why it is called as double phase homogenizer okay so there are other types of homogenizer also first so there are other types of homogenizers like silverson homogenizer ultrasonic homogenizer they also reduce the particle size of dispersed phase so as the particle size is reduced there is less chances of sedimentation of suspension i hope you have understood all the terms we have studied here thank you